5.6 rates of change in rational functions. So this is the last section in chapter 5 before we hit the dreaded trigonometry. So hang on to your hats. This is an easy one for you. Average rate of change we've talked about before is the slope of a secant. The instantaneous rate of change is the slope of a tangent. Remember to give units in your solution for word problems. If you're finding the instantaneous rate of change and it's not a word program, uh, problem, you're simply finding the slope. For rational functions, the only spe specific difference here is that you cannot find the IRC or ARC at or over a vertical asymptote or at a hole. Okay, that makes sense. So I'm going to do some questions from your textbook. Number five says select a strategy to estimate the instantaneous rate of change at each function at the given point. So we're going to do 5b. It says 17x plus 3 over x squared plus 6. And you want to know what is the instantaneous rate of change at x equals minus 5. So what you're going to do is pick a small interview, interval. In this case, again, you have, um, you have an equation. So it's pretty easy for you to change the, um, the amount or the, find a number very close to 0.5 minus 5 that will um, give you an estimate at that point. So I'm going to use, um, I'm going to say the instantaneous rate of change is going to be equal to the function at, now I want to be a little bit higher, so it's this plus h, so let's do minus 4.99 minus the function at minus 5 divided by 0 0.01. Okay, so now all you have to do is plug these values into this equation so that you can get an idea of how much that is. And fortunately, I'm not going to waste time. I'm just going to tell you what the answer is. Minus 0 0.2, 0 0.648 minus, now don't forget your minus, minus is here. This is where everyone always makes a mistake. So all you're doing is finding the slope. How easy is that? Over 0 0.01. And that comes out to approximately minus 0 0.3. So that is the slope of the tangent, an estimated slope of the tangent at the point x equals minus 5 for that function. So let's go on to determine the slope of the line. So the slope of the line now, so sometimes they change the wording, but it really means the very same thing. What is the slope of the line tangent at the point x equals minus 7? So the slope of a tangent is simply the slope of the line. So you're finding the instantaneous rate of change again. So this time we have minus 7. So we're going to do um, f at minus, this time I'm going to go to the other side, minus 7.01. So it doesn't really matter, right? You're still only one one hundredth of a point across. So again, this is IRC, or this is going to be the slope, estimation of the slope. Um, over 0 0.01. Now don't forget that you have a rational expression here, so you have to plug it into, well, let's let's write it out. So I would have minus 7.01 minus 6, that's in the numerator, divided by minus 7.01 plus 5, and then minus minus 7 minus 6 over minus 7 plus 5, and this whole thing, again, is over 0 0.01. So you want to do the calculations in the top here, followed by the calculation in the bottom. And I get approximately uh, minus 2.74. So again, this is a slope, so I don't need units. It's rise over run, right? The slope is about minus 2.74. Okay, the last one I'm going to do is one that they don't really explain very well in the textbook. This is question 8. It says a demand function for snack cakes at a large bakery is given by this function. That's this function right here. This is a demand function. 
So they want you to find out what the revenue function is and what is the marginal revenue at two different points. I'll do them at one. So marginal revenue is the instantaneous rate of change of a revenue function and tells you the additional revenue for selling one more item. Okay, so instead of it being slope, like rise over run, this is giving you how much more costs you, or not how much more costs, but how much more money you're making for selling one more item. So the revenue is demand times price. Okay, so demand, if there, we have 100 people want to buy it at this price, that's my revenue. So let's say it was 100 people for $2, my revenue was $200. So this is the revenue, um, the, the demand function. They want to know what the revenue function is. And I don't know what the price is, but in this case, they tell you that the price is X. So the revenue function, revenue of X, is just going to be 15 times X. That's all you had to do. And I know some students get really confused. Where did this X come from? So it's just saying, well, that's, that's my price. So there's your revenue function. And now what is the marginal revenue when X is 0 0.75? So I'm going to have to plug all this into my equation. Um, don't forget the numerator and the denominator. So we'll say marginal revenue equals, and I'm going to use a 0 0.001 interval, 0 0.001. So I'm going to do um, 15 times 0 0.751 divided by and I have to write all this out, right? 2 times 0 0.751 square it, 11 times 0 0.751 plus 5, and then you have to subtract the same one at 0 0.75. So you're plugging in the other value, and you're going to do all this math on your calculator. Fortunately, we have such things. 11 times 0 0.75 plus 5 and the whole thing is over 0 0.001 and that comes out to about 0 0.3 so it's costing you 30 cents more or you're making 30 cents more for every item sold therefore 30 cents more per item sold. I probably should have said revenue here. Revenue will be. So that's what marginal revenue is and I hope that helps you out. And that's the end of chapter five. Yay! Only three more chapters